I don't ask these questions to be flippant because the reality is there really is absolutely no simple answer and there's no simple solution. Like, yeah, easy for me to say like, oh, we need to invest more money in mental health, but we probably don't because what that money would probably get invested in is companies like Aura experimenting on people. Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine Friday? I'm doing quite well. A little bit tired. It's been a very long week, but I'm here to report on another story. So this one you may even have seen in the headlines, but apparently a man in Georgia who was being held before being actually convicted of any crimes did pass away recently. Now I have looked up the lawsuit on Pacer, but I don't see it. I will continue to look into that. But based on the articles and stuff that I've been reading, it's unclear whether the lawsuit has actually officially been filed or if they are just preparing to file one. I do have a couple news clips that I want to play for y'all. And I will say this story is very shocking and very upsetting. So if you're not in that headspace or whatever today, then I would suggest that you don't maybe watch this video. But essentially, this man, his name is LaShawn Thompson. He was arrested back in June of last year on a simple battery charge. Now, I have requested the incident report for this battery charge. I requested the body camera footage and I have requested any dash camera footage from the incident. So I cannot speak in any detail on exactly why LaShawn was put into jail. I do not know other than it is reported that it had to do with a battery charge but he was awaiting trial. At some time after he was booked into the Fulton County Jail, I don't know if it was immediately upon booking or maybe he spent some time in the general population, but the police did put him into the psychiatric ward of the jail. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show pictures. I'm probably going to have to blur some of them out and censor them and things like that. But these pictures are widely available. So you, if you would like to go and see more evidence that has been circulated with the family's permission, then you are able to go and Google that. But suffice it to say that the conditions that they had LaShawn living in were basically squalor. And really, the reason that I wanted to report on this story today is because how the cops and the inhumane tyrants in Fulton County are twisting LaShawn's death in a sick PR attempt to garner more funding for their torture jails. And if you remember, it was also Georgia where this other sheriff was actually locking inmates into these chairs and leaving them in there for like eight hours, 10 hours. They were going to the bathroom on themselves and all of that. So Georgia seems to have some very serious problems going on in their county jails. Now, obviously, as I always say, people are innocent until they're proven guilty. And as I always say, if people are violent, they're committing crimes and they're unable to keep it together, then, you know, they should be dealt with by the criminal justice system. The problem arises when the criminal justice system looks like a medieval torture camp. And that's what this jail looks like to me. So I am going to play a few news clips because I would like to give LaShawn's family an opportunity to be heard on the platform. And they do speak in either this clip or the one I'm going to play right after. So let me pull that up. And this is just a local news clip that aired, I believe, yesterday that I got from YouTube. Tonight, the family of a man who died at the Fulton County Jail is now demanding action. They say he was essentially eaten alive by insects and bed bugs while in custody. Tracy A. McPierce spoke with him just hours ago. She's joining us now live from the Fulton County Courthouse. Tracy? Well, LaShawn Thompson had been held in the psych wing of the jail for three months when an officer found him unresponsive in his cell. So he had been in there for three months. Oh, September. Yeah, so that means that they probably just put him straight into the psych unit of the jail when he was booked in June. His family tells me by that point, they couldn't even recognize him. He was definitely a heavy set guy. And from those pictures, he looks totally different. He's not the same person. Brad McRae says these pictures of his brother that he shared with us, 35-year-old LaShawn Thompson, are hard to look at. His cell at the Fulton County Jail covered in filth and his body covered in sores and bites from bed bugs and lice. Not that it's the most important aspect here, but the pictures just also just look so dark. Like, 
doesn't look like there's any windows in that cell. And I'm not a doctor, but I know enough about human anatomy and biology and physiology to know that we actually require sunlight. We require sunlight. And so that dark room, it covered in filth, infested with vermin and bugs is, is, is literally like, I remember when I was a little girl, I used to watch those sick history channel shows where it was like showing you how they used to torture people in the middle ages. And I used to think like, wow, I'm so glad that we've come so far. I'm so glad we don't torture people like that anymore. Wow. Was I wrong? Look at this. I mean, don't look at it. Cause I'm not showing you all the picture of it here on this channel, but the man is covered in what appear to be sores and scabs because of the infestation. And you're going to hear LaShawn's family tell you the corrections officers saw this deterioration happening and continued to allow it. It looked like he wasn't eating in jail or malnutrition or maybe the bed bugs did it. The Fulton County Medical Examiner report lists his cause of death as undetermined, but noted. And that's very important. They were not even able to determine a cause of death, which, yeah, I mean, if you want to get into the conspiratorial mindset, maybe the cause of death could be homicide and the coroner doesn't want to put it on the police. That's also just speculation. It's also very likely that there were so many different things that there really is no way to tell what actually caused the death. But listen what the coroner did say. A severe bed bug infestation. The family says Thompson was brought to the jail on a misdemeanor simple battery charge in June and was put in the psych wing because the jail was aware of his schizophrenia. They are now demanding the jail be closed and law enforcement open a criminal investigation. So we need a change in the system. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office told 11 Alive its Office of Professional Standards is investigating Thompson's death and will determine if criminal charges are warranted. The agency wouldn't speak to us on camera today, but said in a statement it spent $500,000 to address an infestation of bed bugs, lice, and other. Y'all know I did look up what the Fulton County Police budget is, and it is $140 million a year. Vermin after Thompson's death and updated security rounds to include addressing sanitary conditions. And the family's attorney. So after somebody died and the cause of death was ruled as undetermined, then they put $500,000 into getting rid of the infestations. Attorney tells me they're doing their own investigation to determine if the bug bites caused the infection that killed Thompson. So it looks like the theory of the case from the family's attorney's perspective is that perhaps an infection did result in LaShawn losing his life. I don't want to get too far down the track of like, you know, he should have never even been in this jail in the first place. Because again, I really I don't know what he did. I don't know what he didn't do. I don't know what he's accused of, all of that. But I do know that he was innocent until he would have been proven guilty and maybe he would maybe he wouldn't but now he will never get his day in court because he could not survive the conditions in the jail i mean that is pretty sick where do we live and i always call this place an open air prison but this is what's happening in the closed prison they get that proof they intend to sue very disturbing tracy thanks for the update okay so it looks like maybe the lawsuit isn't moving forward just yet and actually in fact the attorney the family's attorney is conducting an investigation now i do want to show y'all one more video clip i want to read a little article and then i think we'll be done for the day a fulton county jail and maid has now demanded justice months after his death LaShawn Thompson was found dead in his jail cell, covered in bed bugs and other insects last year. His family believes the filthy living conditions contributed to his death. Fox 5's Deidre Dukes is live at the Fulton County Courthouse, where the family held a news conference this afternoon. Deidre? And the family telling us that Thompson suffered from mental issues. He was being held in the jail's psychiatric ward at the time of his death. His family now asking that criminal charges be filed in the case, and they want that jail closed. There is no excuse for a mentally ill inmate to be left alone in a jail, abandoned to die. Attorney Michael Harper says that's just what happened. We have jail reports showing they saw Mr. Thompson deteriorating. The medical staff and the, and the officers saw him deteriorating in the last few weeks before he died. They did nothing to help him. 
LaShawn Thompson's family wants those responsible for his care at the Fulton County Jail to be criminally charged after the inmate was found dead in his jail cell. So it seems as though the family is considering a civil suit basically a private action, probably on behalf of LaShawn, in addition to suing as themselves. But in addition to that, they're looking for criminal charges. They're looking for someone to face criminal charges for what LaShawn went through and ultimately what ended his life. Now, it does just bring up, and this is something that Mike from Blind Justice does talk about quite a bit. It's kind of like, when do we actually stop and say this cycle isn't working? Like, when do we actually stop and say, maybe putting people in jail isn't even necessarily always the appropriate response? Because it is sort of like eye for an eye. And I don't know who said it, but something about eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. I mean, I do understand the impulse of wanting the person who inflicted this torture on someone to face the same type of torture. I do understand that impulse. I do. I understand it. And in some ways... I agree. I want them to have to suffer the way they made people suffer. I agree. But then it's like, what does that really contribute? And on this one, I mean, reasonable minds can disagree. But let's say, let's say like the five most responsible people for this actually do go to jail and they have to be in conditions like this. I do understand that for the victims of those people, that might feel like some type of justice. But like, is it really? Um, I mean, I guess it is kind of like just a rhetorical question because I don't know the answer, but at some point it's like either we're against this type of treatment and we don't think it's okay or we do think it's okay, but only when it's against people that we don't like. And it's like, I don't think that can necessarily be what we're doing here. What makes us any different? than the people who inflicted this upon LaShawn if we then inflicted it upon someone else. And I know this is like a very age old, I'm not bringing up any contemplations that haven't been brought up throughout history, to be honest, but I don't even like that a jail exists that's infested with bugs like this. I don't even like that it even exists. I don't like that this is how we're handling people who, this is honestly, it's also, this man has not been proven guilty. He was awaiting trial. He hadn't even been proven guilty. He hadn't been convicted yet from what I'm reading. Maybe I'm reading this incorrectly. Arrested for misdemeanor simple battery. Taken to jail where he was placed in a psych wing. It doesn't look like he had gone to court on this. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's... I don't ask these questions to be flippant because the reality is there really is absolutely no simple answer and there's no simple solution. Like, yeah, easy for me to say like, oh, we need to invest more money in mental health. But we probably don't because what that money would probably get invested in is companies like Aura experimenting on people with very limited oversight, experimenting on prisoners, experimenting on people who have mental health conditions, just like Amanda Rabb was experimented on. And she died anyway. She died in her bed too. And they can't get their story together on what her cause of death was. But the medical examiner, the coroner, said that it was cardiac arrhythmia. Lima's over here talking about it was a seizure disorder. Can't even get their story straight. I don't know. I'm just on my soapbox about it. I don't have any real, I don't have any solutions. That's the issue. I don't, I don't have any solutions to propose. I just can point to the problems, I guess. Covered in bugs, September 13th. Thompson was being held in the psychiatric wing. We're asking for Fannie Willis, the DA of Fulton County, to launch a criminal investigation into the death of LaShawn Thompson. And we're- there should be some investigation launched, at the very least, even if it's not to result in someone going to jail. A criminal investigation should be launched to see if this is a pattern or practice. Is this going on with other people? Are there people about to die? Like, what's really going on here? And we're going to read one article, maybe two articles. I'm going to show y'all how the cops are spending this. We're also asking for the Fulton County commissioners to close the jail and to build a new one. Harper represents Thompson's family. He shared these images of the filthy jail cell Harper was being held in during that period. His relatives live out of state and only learned he was incarcerated after his death. The jail should be closed because nobody should be housed like this. Uh, It was a crazy incident that happened and we want justice for it. 
A spokesman with the Fulton County Sheriff's Office says Thompson's death remains under investigation and that since his death, the agency has spent $500,000 to address the bug infestation within the Fulton County Jail and updated protocols to include addressing sanitary conditions. They had to update their protocols to address sanitary conditions. I mean, like, this is just reminding me of the site ward like what was like the mental asylums back in even as recently as the 70s i mean i guess recently as right now it's like all those horrible pictures we used to see it was like somebody went undercover into a psych ward or something it was like people were smearing stuff all over the walls not even gonna be able to say what it was and I, this is how we this is how we're treating people who have been diagnosed with mental illness and look I, again i will never ever justify or make an excuse for violent behavior and innocent till proven guilty again like I said I have requested the incident report but this cannot be the solution like this just cannot be how we handle this like I think you know even if I don't have the solution right now I got to be able to say this ain't it and I really honestly I don't think building a whole bunch of more jails is the solution either because now we're putting money into building fancier nicer torture camps it's like those chairs that Victor Hill was using over there in whatever that other county in Georgia was. They were looking like they were state of the art. They looked clean. They didn't look like they were smeared in fluids. But he was still using them in a way that was torturing people and hurting people. And it was people who were innocent until proven guilty. And I just don't think building a whole new jail is the solution either. Now, does I? I but I see the other side of this too because I've lived in these big cities and I've seen... As the district attorneys do get more lax on prosecuting like simple battery or simple, you know, misdemeanor theft or whatever, it's like then people take it as a free license to just run amok and steal or batter people. And I definitely don't think we should be encouraging that either. I guess I just I really I see a lot of sides of the situation. I see how complex it is, but I see enough to know the way that we are handling this right now as far as with these prisons and locking people up and taking away their freedoms, especially like before they're even proven guilty. It's not it. It's just this ain't it. We got we got to come up with something else because this isn't it. All right. So now I'm going to read two short articles and then I think we're just going to be done for the day. I'll give you all something to ponder on. OK, so this is actually a national news story USA Today eaten alive by insects Atlanta man found DEAD in jail cell infested with bed bugs coroner says a man died at an Atlanta jail after being eaten alive by insects and bed bugs his family's attorney told USA Today on Thursday LaShawn Thompson who's 35 years old was arrested for misdemeanor simple battery in Atlanta last summer officials said he was then taken to Fulton County Jail, where he was placed in the psychiatric wing after officials determined he was mentally ill. And this is another thing, too, just like off the bat. I don't think you should be put in a different wing of the jail just because of a diagnosis. I think if you are acting out on the diagnosis and putting people in danger because of the diagnosis and you need to be medicated and stuff like that, then maybe. But the fact that they put him in these squalor conditions just because they like determined he was mentally ill, I don't know about all that. That's just my opinion. According to a Fulton County Medical Examiner's report obtained by USA Today, which I will also FOIA request, Thompson was found unresponsive in his jail cell September 19th and pronounced dead after failed life-saving attempts by responding local police and medical personnel. This is a quote from the report. The officer stated that it is unknown the last time LaShawn was seen as the case continues to be investigated. So I don't know if this is supposed to say this or if he meant to say last seen alive, but it does say that the medical examiner spoke to an officer and the officer told them that we don't know when the last time he was even seen was. There were no obvious signs of trauma found on his body, but his entire body was covered in bed bugs. The medical examiner's report also goes on to note that there was a severe bed bug infestation in the cell in the psych ward. His cause of death in the medical examiner's report was listed as undetermined. And here's a picture of him. Rest in peace, LaShawn. Mr. Thompson was found dead in a filthy jail cell after being eaten alive by insects and 
bed bugs, the Atlanta attorney Michael Harper said Thursday. We are asking for a criminal investigation into the matter and major changes at the jail. A lawsuit in the case is pending. I think that means they may file a lawsuit, but I mean, look, look, we, look at the, it's just covered in just a whole layer of just filth. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office did release a statement to USA Today. And according to the statement, a full investigation was launched into the circumstances surrounding the death. I will link the article and y'all can go and look at these pictures if you are so inclined. You can also take my word for it and just know that this is squalor conditions. It is very unsanitary. It is filthy and we also know that it's infested with vermin, lice, and bugs. The jail records obtained through public records requests established the detention offices and medical staff at the jail noticed Thompson's health was deteriorating, but they did nothing to administer aid to him or help him. The lawyer said they literally watched his health decline until he died. When his body was found, one of the detention officers refused to administer CPR because in her words, she freaked out. Y'all see this? When his body was found, one of the cops refused to administer CPR because she was freaked out. The jail cell that Mr. Thompson was housed in was not fit for a diseased animal. He did not deserve this. Again, I'm not going to be showing those pictures. In addition to a criminal investigation, Thompson's attorney said his family is calling for someone to be held accountable in the closure and the replacement of the jail. It's no secret that the dilapidated and rapidly eroding conditions of the current facility make it difficult to meet the goal of providing a clean, well-maintained, and healthy environment for all inmates and staff. The sheriff's office said that is precisely why Sheriff Patrick Labatt continues to call for building a new Fulton County Jail and Criminal Justice Complex, which will provide an elite level of care, mental health services and security and cleanliness, which, again, I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But the very last thing I think we should do is give these people more money to build another torture chamber. I don't I don't. I don't understand how that is going to fix this problem. You know what could have fixed the problem? Maybe y'all put in some of that money towards security and safety and sanitation protocols way before this happened. You don't need a brand new jail to spray the jail for bugs. I'm sorry. You just don't. You don't need a brand new jail to replace somebody's infested mattress. You just don't. You just don't. I can't imagine that those mattresses cost more than about $20 to $50. I just can't imagine it. You don't need a brand new jail for that. You don't need a brand new jail to know when the last time you saw one of these people that's under your care was. You just don't. You don't need a brand new jail for that. In fact, building a brand new jail might take money away from those things. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, I'm obviously I'm not an accountant, but if you ask me, that seems like a lot more feasible and efficient and immediate than we need a brand new elite complex. Let's read one more article, then we're going to be done. All right. This one is from WSB TV. Sheriff responds to claims inmate was eaten alive by bedbugs inside Fulton County Jail. The family of a man who died in the Fulton County Jail says he was eaten alive in his cell by bedbugs and insects. Now, the family's lawyer is calling for a criminal investigation and a new jail to be built, which, I mean, if that would actually help something, I'd be on their side with it, but I just don't think it will. The family gathered outside the Fulton County Courthouse on Thursday. So it took him only three months to die. He died in September after a three-month stay at the jail. So I mean, he wasn't even there that long. Deplorable condition. He was arrested for simple battery. And okay, so the attorney said he was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but he was physically healthy when he was booked into the jail. There's no excuse for a mentally ill inmate to be left alone in a jail, abandoned to die. A agreed. How will building a new complex really help with that? Y'all left him alone there. If he was in a brand new jail with shiny chrome toilets and no bed bugs, y'all still left him alone, abandoned him. You still watched his health deteriorating and did nothing. You still kept him in the jail despite him not really probably even needing to be there because he hadn't been proven guilty yet. Y'all could be doing that in a new brand new shiny chromed out jail too. So I don't understand really truly how a new jail is going to fix any of this. Just seems like more funding for the police, more funding for the tyrants so that they can do torture 
and depravity in a brand new shiny building that they get to work in. The cause of death was undetermined. They did nothing to help him. They found him dead in his cell, lying there infested with bed bugs and lice. And that is what killed him, the lawyer said. Thompson's brother, so the victim's brother, Brad McRae, says that the family was horrified to see the photos. It was heartbreaking because nobody should be seen like that. Nobody should see that. And that's another reason I'm not putting the pictures out here. Y'all can go look at them yourself. They're out there, but I ain't putting them out there. So the jail said that a full investigation was launched into the circumstances surrounding his death. First and foremost, we would like to extend our condolences to the family of the person we let die and treated like a diseased animal. Um, the manner and cause of death was listed as undetermined. So we launched an investigation. Part of the investigation, immediate action was taken. That's the $500,000 for the infestation, the updating the security round protocols, ongoing investigation. So they're investigating themselves. I'm sure they'll find that they did absolutely nothing wrong. The health, listen to this crock of shit. The health, well being, and security of inmates in our care is our top priority. They will lie straight to our face. They will lie straight to our face. They will tell us anything. They will tell us anything. They really said, knowing people were going to read this, the health, well being, and security of inmates in our care is our top priority. After they didn't even give the man CPR because they were freaked out. <laughs> Something's not lining up here. Something's not lining up here. They watched the man deteriorate and die. Kept him isolated. Never ran one mop. Never ran one broom through his cell. But it was their top priority was the health and safety of the inmate. That's not true. It's a lie. You're lying. Y'all lie. You are lying. It's no secret that the dilapidated and rapidly eroding conditions of the current facility make it incredibly difficult to meet the goal of providing a clean, well-maintained, healthy environment for all inmates and staff. But this is also just not true. Maybe this building is dilapidated and rapidly eroding. Maybe. But the man didn't die from tetanus. He didn't die from some dilapidating and falling on his head. Maybe he did. It is undetermined. But it seems more likely that he died from living in unsanitary conditions that are not fit for humans to live in that could have been addressed even without a shiny new jail. Somebody could have ran a broom through there. Somebody could have Cloroxed the floor. Somebody could have done something in that cell that could have helped. They did nothing to help. And now as a reward for this depravity, they want to work in a brand new shiny jail. That don't make sense to me. I, it don't make sense to me. Maybe to some of y'all it makes sense. It don't make sense to me. And that is precisely why Sheriff Labatt continues to call building a new Fulton County Jail and Criminal Justice Complex, which will provide an elite level of care, mental health services, security, and cleanliness. I don't believe you. What have you done? What have you done with the jail you already have? You let it become dilapidated. You let people get infested and eaten alive in that jail. So why on earth is any reasonable person supposed to believe that if you have a shiny new jail, you're not going to let it go to sh just like you let the first one go? Hello, this is our taxpayer money, y'all. We're allowed to ask these questions. In fact, I think we have an obligation to do so because LaShawn Thompson will never get to ask. It's ridiculous. It needs to stop. It just needs to stop. The lie straight to our face talking about security and health and well-being of the inmates is our top priority. It's a lie. That's not true. It's not your top priority. It's just not. Stop the lies. Stop the lies. I do think it does need to be investigated criminally. And I do think that if anybody is found to be criminally guilty, then they shouldn't be able to be cops no more. Hello? Hey, I don't know. I have to figure out some stuff first. I'm in the middle of recording right now. Okay. Okay. Bye. I don't remember my train of thought, but it was something about them not needing to have no new jail whenever they've shown they're not even good stewards of the current jail that they have. I mean, there's a larger issue here and it has to do with mental health. It has to do specifically, I think, with schizophrenia because I have seen this schizophrenia diagnosis be used against people, Bam Margera specifically, where the cops treated him differently because of that diagnosis. I've seen Amanda Rabb be treated differently by the criminal justice system because of that diagnosis. And now the fact that they're highlighting that this man had schizophrenia 
and they put him in a different wing of the prison because of it. I mean, I definitely think that this question of schizophrenia and treatment and I, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm seeing patterns here that are very difficult to ignore and I'm probably not going to stop seeing the patterns. So, uh, Again, I don't want to be a broken record. I don't know what the solution is. I really don't. Because we can't have people being violent out here, hurting people in a civilized society. We can't have that. We just can't. And so there does need to be some type of preventative measures taken to make sure that people can't hurt others violently. And if they do hurt others violently, what does justice look like to their victim? But even before we get to that, People are innocent until they're proven guilty. So why do we have all these people being housed for months and months and months and months in squalor torture chamber conditions when they might be found innocent at the end of it anyway? You know what I mean? Like that don't seem right to me either. But these are questions we really need to talk about and discuss in a mature adult manner. It's definitely not going to be no black and white solution like defund the police. Don't give them any money. That's not going to work. It don't work. But let's just give them all the money they're asking for and just give them every single thing they want is not definitely not going to work either. So I don't know. I don't have any solutions, but I did want to just share this story with y'all. I'm sure you might have even seen it. Some of y'all in the headlines. It's ridiculous. I do have some pending public records requests out and I will keep you updated if I do get any updates on the story. My heart goes out to LaShawn himself and his family who is now having to deal with this and has had to deal with this. It's they lost a loved one and all of that. And I, and I feel sad about it. I don't, it's sad. It's just not cool. It's just messed up. So anyway, that's all I really had for today. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay. Bye.